This video is brought to you by Astronix Test Systems and the Freedom brand of communications system analyzers. The topic of this video is testing live DMR repeaters. What are the skills you can expect to gain from this presentation? Learn what it means to test your DMR radio infrastructure in live mode or in test mode and when to use each mode. Learn when you should test the system over the air or take it out of service for testing. Gain an understanding of how to set up your test equipment to perform over the air and bench live testing. How is this presentation structured? First, hear about a customer who used his skills in testing live DMR repeaters to quickly verify system performance without service interruption. Next, review the basics of DMR radio systems and take a quick peek under the hood at the digital protocol that makes it possible. Finally, discover best practices for selecting the test method, setting up the equipment, and performing the necessary test. Could these skills help you save time and money? That's exactly what happened to Mark at a large utility company in Texas. Several radio system users were experiencing problems accessing the system in one area when using portable radios. A major storm had caused widespread outages to the electrical infrastructure. Mark needed to find the problem and fix it quickly. Using his Freedom R8100 analyzer, he confirmed that the system sensitivity was poor by testing the live repeater over the air. During his visual inspection of the radio equipment, he located a faulty cable. He was able to swap the cable without taking the system off the air. He was pleased that his test equipment could perform the live test over the air. Without it, the system would have been offline during his testing. Mark's understanding of DMR radio and his test equipment helped him analyze and respond to the situation. What is DMR and how does it work? Digital Mobile Radio, abbreviated as DMR, is a limited open digital mobile radio standard defined by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute and is used in commercial products around the world. DMR, along with P25 Phase 2 and NXDN, are the main competing technologies in achieving 6.25 kHz equivalent bandwidth using the proprietary AMBE Plus 2 vocoder. DMR and P25 Phase 2 both use two-slot TDMA in a 12.5 kHz channel, while NXDN uses discrete 6.25 kHz channels using frequency division, and Tetra uses a four-slot TDMA in a 25 kHz channel. The primary goal of the standard is to specify a digital system with low complexity, low cost, and interoperability across brands so radio system purchasers are not locked into a proprietary solution. In practice, many vendors have introduced proprietary features that make their product offerings non-interoperable with other brands. Although not strictly necessary for testing, a knowledge of the basics of the underlying protocol details can provide insights when interpreting the test results. Listed here for your reference is a list of key values derived from the standard that are helpful in gaining a deeper understanding of the subject. The standard defines three tiers of service. Tier 1 provides only direct communication from radio to radio without system infrastructure. Tier 2 provides for conventional systems using radio repeaters. Each repeater provides two transmit and receive paths, one in each of the two time slots, using only a single frequency pair. Tier 3 provides for trunking systems. Each site contains a controller with a control channel, and a number of individual base station radios provide the voice or data channels, which are dynamically allocated on a call-by-call -call basis. Each base station provides two channels, one in each slot. 
Again, keep in mind that some manufacturer systems are not DMR Tier 2 or Tier 3 standard compliant. Also, radio features from one vendor may not fully interoperate with other vendor systems. This presentation focuses on Tier 2 and Tier 3 systems since they use infrastructure to provide communication services. The base station or repeater can operate in one of two modes, live mode or test mode. Each mode must be tested differently and serves a different purpose. Live mode means the base station is operating as a repeater. It is listening for a DMR signal at the receiver frequency and sending that signal back out at the transmitter frequency. If there is no received signal for a period of time, the transmitter stops sending out a signal. Once the system is in sleep mode, the received signal must include a wake-up sequence to re-enable the transmitter. And so the test equipment must be able to generate this wake-up sequence. In this mode, the repeater can be tested while connected to the test equipment on the bench, or it can be tested over the air while it is still connected to the outside antenna. Over-the-air testing can verify that the repeater is functioning as a repeater, but it may not be able to determine how well it is able to perform its job. For example, accurate power output and receiver sensitivity measurements may not be possible unless the base station is put in test mode. Test mode means the base station is no longer operating as a repeater. The system is not able to provide communication service while in this mode. Its receiver and transmitter operate independently under the control of an attached PC or through front panel controls. The manufacturer provides software that can be used to enter a test mode and control all of the parameters of the base station. Once the test equipment is connected directly to the base station, the manufacturer's service uh, the service manual procedure can be followed to fully test and align the hardware. In this mode, the test equipment does not need to send a wake-up sequence as is required in live mode. In summary, live mode testing is for quick functional verification and can be performed while the system is on the air. Test mode is used for performance verification, diagnostic troubleshooting, and tuning. Take a minute to review this slide to make sure you clearly understand when you would use test mode and when you would use live mode on the bench or when you would use live mode over the air. How do you connect the test equipment and set it up to perform the necessary tasks? Focusing now on live mode testing, consider the following scenario which lends itself to an over the air test. You are responding to an end user complaint about service degradation or interruption. You want to verify the system can receive signals and retransmit those signals without impacting other users. You have the instrument in the front seat of your vehicle and are parked near the base of the tower. How do you connect the instrument to the system and set it up for testing? First, consider the test equipment. It is a Freedom R8000 series service monitor equipped with the DMR protocol test package and the live repeater test option so that it can simulate an end user radio and generate the wake up sequence. Antennas for the appropriate band are placed on the RF gen out and antenna ports. After configuring the instrument in DMR mode, the instrument is placed in duplex operation. It now must be configured with the correct frequency pair of the repeater and the correct color code. Finally, the instrument is told to look for a base station sync pattern and, can, and then we configure the output to generate a solid tone DMR test pattern. Now that the instrument is set up to access the system, see the areas highlighted in green, it will measure the output of the repeater and display all relevant readings on the screen. Here is a list of the relevant information that can be used to verify the repeater is functional. We'll start by looking at the areas highlighted in red. The DMR sync light shows that a valid sync pattern is detected. The power level reading 
will be affected by the antenna gain and the distance from the base station. Though the performance of the repeater can't be accurately confirmed, the reading can be compared to previous readings taken with the same setup and at the same location. The frequency error is a key parameter for the repeater. If it is too far out of spec, the repeater will need to have the reference frequency aligned. Signal quality measurements include symbol deviation, symbol rate error, FSK error, magnitude error, and bit error rate, or BER. These have defined performance limits in the standard. In over-the-air testing, they will give general indication of how clean the signal is. Highlighted in yellow, we have the eye diagram, the constellation diagram, distribution plot, and power profile. These provide a visual performance indication which can help an experienced technician diagnose the cause of the problem. You'll notice that the display zone and the meter zone are highlighted in yellow. These various diagrams are user selectable. If the over-the-air test indicates that the repeater is functional and generally performing as expected, this may be all the testing that is needed. However, if the system is not functional or is underperforming, the next step is to take the system off the air and determine if the issue is the radio equipment itself or the RF cables or the duplex or the lightning arrestor or the antenna. This requires the test equipment to be connected directly to the repeater while running in live mode. The test equipment needs to be connected directly to the repeater this time. If the repeater output is over 150 watts, use an external attenuator to protect the RF in-out port. To test receiver sensitivity directly at the receiver, use an attenuator to lower the output level or make sure the instrument has the extended range RF gen out port option installed. It is also possible to use a single connection from the RF in and out port to the antenna port of the duplexer. However, this assumes that the duplexer is well tuned and in good working condition. Insertion loss will slightly decrease the sensitivity of the repeater. The instrument is configured as before and provides the same readings. However, now that it's connected directly, it can be used to accurately measure the output level. It can also be used to test the sensitivity of the receiver by lowering the generate signal's output power until the bit error rate reads 5%. Should the repeater have performance issues, it may be necessary to put it in test mode. At that point, you will, you will be able to perform the manufacturer's full test and alignment procedure. Let's review. What is the most important information to remember from this presentation? By now, it should be clear that having test equipment that can perform a test on a repeater in live mode provides a valuable and quick tool to verify the system is functional. The ability to perform the verification over the air further enhances the system maintainer's ability to check the system without interrupting service. The Freedom product family of communication systems analyzers is very easy to learn, easy to use. It provides all the data at a glance, and it does it all in a small, lightweight instrument that is capable of addressing all of your radio test requirements. For additional information and step-by-step -step instructions, please find the following app note titled Testing DMR Devices in Operational Mode Using the Freedom Communications System Analyzer, located in the document library on the Freedom website. Please check our website for product information such as data sheets, brochures, operators' manuals, users' guides, application notes, and other videos. Contact information for our sales and application engineers is on the support page. To schedule a product demonstration or to obtain pricing information, contact your local U.S. representative or international distributor. You can also connect with us through social media. 
On behalf of the Freedom Team at Astronics Test Systems, we trust you have found this presentation useful and hope you will reach out to us and let us show you how our expertise, our experience, and our products can save you time and money as you endeavor to keep the radio communications flowing on your system. Yes.